and I guess it's recording. So, uh, so last time we uh, had a discussion about uh, deep reinforcement learning. If I want to uh, just do a recap, uh, we can say that uh, we have a main component of agent, environment, action, and the observation or the state. Uh, in reinforcement learning. So we have um, a task that will be defined for the agent. Inside the environment, agent should do some kind of actions and he will got some kind of rewards uh, to, um, to uh, rewards such, such as uh, punishment or uh, rewards to continue the action to reach the objective or the, um, the task that is defined for the agent. So these are the main components of the deep reinforcement learning. And we talked about uh, value learning, that uh, in value learning, we actually try to learn something that we called it uh, Q function. So uh, we have the, um, um, uh, the state action, and uh, we in this state uh, space, sorry, we, uh, we should take one action to maximize the value of Q functions. So uh, the, uh, based on the uh, maximization, maximization of the Q function, we can define the policy to which action should be chosen. So this is the main uh, uh, definition of the value learning and specifically Q deep learning, uh, Q reinforcement learning. So um, uh, we have a function that we should maximize it. So uh, there are some um, uh, disadvantages that we can say for this type of algorithm. So one of the disadvantages is the complexity. So when we use the Q learning, uh, the uh, complexity of the, in, uh, the environment should be very low. So we can say that it work well when we are dealing with discrete uh, environments, not the continuous environment. Just uh, if you remember last time we uh, had an example of the uh, Atari game. Uh, so it's a, um, uh, it's a uh, breakdown uh, game. So the actions was uh, really uh, discrete action uh, space. It was left, stay in the same place or right. So uh, we have very uh, small um, um, action space in this type of scenario. Uh, and the other uh, limitation that we are dealing with this uh, type of uh, value learning algorithm is, the, um, um, uh, is, is that they are not really adapted for working with a stochastic uh, uh, environment. So uh, the, uh, the policy is, uh, should be defined in a deterministic way. So when we have some kind of uh, um, uh, some some kind of actions that maybe are not predefined in the environment, uh, or uh, we couldn't guess the actions based on the information that we have in uh, in the environment. So this type of uh, Q learning algorithm couldn't be really uh, useful for us. So uh, there is a. Um, some Q learning, uh, advanced Q learning algorithm that maybe deal with this continuous action space. But uh, there are other type of uh, deep reinforcement learning algorithm that we call them policy gradient method or policy learning that is really uh, designed for working with continuous action space. So uh, it is the topic of today. So in policy learning algorithm, because we try to uh, directly learn the policy that governs the agent uh, and then sample actions from the, uh, this policy, we can say that we are one step uh, uh, toward than this type of uh, value learning because we don't need to maximize any function to define the policy at the end. We directly uh, start by uh, modeling the, uh, the uh, uh, policy. And based on that, we try to sample the action from this uh, policy uh, distribution that we have. If uh, I want to just um, uh, uh, talk about a uh, deep queue uh, net, uh, network, that we discussed last time. As an input of deep neural network, we will have the S state. So uh, for example, each episode uh, of the game could be one state. And uh, 
deep Q uh, uh, network, uh, uh, neural network should define in each state, in this uh, uh, input state, which action will give us the maximum reward. So, for example, here you are uh, seeing that if the pallet uh, goes to the left side, we will have, for example, uh, 20 um, uh, reward. If it's a stay in the same place, we will have three. If it goes to the right, uh, we don't have any. So maybe we failed. So based on uh, uh, deep QN, we should maximize the reward. So the first action is the thing that will be chosen in this type of scenario. But in a policy gradient algorithm, we are dealing with probability. And it is important because it is the uh, uh, optimization uh, question and we are dealing with probability. The summation of all the actions, the probability that we will have should be, uh, will, uh, should be equal to one. So uh, the same if, for example, the input will be the state that we are, to the deep neural network model, we have the probability for each of the actions that we can take. So here the action space is uh, the same as the previous one. Is it, it is disc discrete and it is like a classification question, but you can see that we have different probability for each action that we can take. And, uh, uh, and it is the probability uh, function. We uh, 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 aggregate all this pro probability, and this is the it has the highest value. Maybe the action one will be chosen, but because it is the probability, maybe the next time that we run the algorithm, this action that has 10% of the chance to be chosen uh, will be chosen by the algorithm. So it is the way that we are dealing with this uh, policy gradient algorithm. We have probability of the actions in the state and based on the ag uh, um, aggregation of these uh, policies, we choose the one uh, uh, that uh, has the highest probability. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, um, each time that we uh, run the algorithm, maybe the other uh, action uh, will be chosen. But the, the other things uh, that we should consider is in this type of algorithm, we directly optimize the policy. We don't find we don't need to find any type of uh, Q values and after that uh, find the uh, maximum award. But uh, is there any uh, other advantages of this, uh, this uh, type of algorithm? So uh, the one thing that uh, we can mention is this type of algorithm, it works well, well when we are dealing with continuous action space. Uh, in uh, this uh, Q function, uh, 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 learning value uh, learning you are seeing that for example the probability of going left is higher than going uh, right or staying in the same uh, position and if i show it as a distribution so it is a simply gaussian distribution uh, in ad, uh, in uh, in uh, plus of just knowing that in which direction we can go we can understand with which speed we can go to each direction. So uh, we will have, uh, for example, uh, for this scenario, we will have the peak of the uh, distribution on the left side, and we can define with which speed the agent should move to the left side uh, with a fast, slow, or this kind of things, uh, instead of just going to the left, right, and uh, uh, staying in a place. You are seeing that we have, uh, we are dealing on the uh, x axis, we are dealing with the continuous numbers, uh, number space. So it helps us to uh, just uh, use this type of uh, uh, poli policy learning for continuous uh, action space that uh, we are dealing. So, uh, for example, if we want to uh, model this uh, type of uh, policy learning, we need to find two uh, kind of parameters, set of parameters. 
one is the mean and the other is the variance of this distribution. Uh, the distribution can be chosen based on the, uh, based on the uh, question, based on the problem that you are uh, dealing. But the Gaussian distribution is uh, one of the type of distribution that we uh, mostly uh, work with. So uh, for example, here you are seeing that uh, if I just plot uh, this, uh, the distribution uh, based on the state that we are located now, the mean value of the distribution could be negative one, that this negative is defining the side that we should move, and the variance is, a, uh, the, for example, it's just a sample, it is a, a 0 0.5. So it says that with which speed we can move to uh, each direction. So by this type of algorithm, we can uh, model a lot of different type of questions. For example, uh, in autonomous vehicle, when we need to, uh, we are dealing with continuous action space and also the, uh, in, uh, in each uh, state, we need to know how much we need to steer the, uh, the, um, uh, the car in which direction. So after uh, uh, calculate, for example, uh, the, uh, the probability of each of these uh, action space, so we need to sample from the distribution. Here, for example, it's a, a sample that it says, with this speed, uh, if you are going to the left direction with high probability, you will get the highest reward. So it is the way that we interpret the output of this, uh, uh, this uh, set of parameters uh, in deep uh, Q network. So, uh, so if I want to use a case study like a self-driving car in this scenario, I can say that uh, if you define to set a different parameter, the agent should be the vehicle in the uh, uh, autonomous vehicle that we have. The observation or the estates are the camera or different type of uh, sensors that we are using like LiDAR. And the actions is a string, the wheel angle. So the, the, these angles uh, could be any uh, value in a continuous uh, uh, action space. And the reward is a distance that the agent can travel. So. Uh, these are different components that we can design for, uh, for the question. And the algorithm should be defined like this. First, we need to initialize the agent. It is a random initialization. And uh, uh, just keep it in, uh, in the mind that at the beginning of the question, we don't uh, define any kind of, uh, for example, lane detection or anything for the agent. It just randomly located in the environment that is uh, predefined. So after initialize the agent, we run uh, the policy uh, until the termination. Their termination, it depends on the scenario, but in the case that we are dealing with is just uh, crashing, uh, means that uh, have, have an accident with the border, or just uh, get succeed or re reaching at the area that uh, we, call, we called it final. So uh, we run the policy under the uh, uh, until the termination. And after that, we record all state action rewards. For example, uh, we, uh, we define, for example, these collection of state action reward at each state or at each episode of the driving. And at the end, uh, sorry, at this uh, step, we just consider the actions action space that has the low reward, uh, leads us to have the low uh, uh, reward. We are dealing with thresholding. For example, we are saying that the last, uh, for example, two or three actions may lead us to have the penalty or the crash. And we divide the, the uh, beginning uh, states, like the first two or three um, uh, states, as a, as a state that has a positive or high reward for us. So it is uh, maybe a very naive approach to 
uh, to uh, modeling this type of questions, but you are seeing that without, uh, without defining any kind of uh, boundaries for the question, we can solve the, uh, the algorithm by this type of uh, thresholding and defining the uh, decreased probability of actions that results to the low reward and increased probability of actions that result to the high reward. So uh, this is the iteration uh, type of uh, dynamic system. So we need to uh, run the uh, algorithm again and again, and each time it's uh, learned, uh, it's a way that adults usually learn. We calculate the probability of each actions that maybe we, uh, we take, and based on the final uh, result, we can decide, okay, maybe we need to change the last actions that leads us to this type of failure. So we run the algorithm again and again, and at the end, we finally reach at the level that we can say that we optimize the policy or we uh, uh, succeed in the, uh, in the scenario that we defined. So uh, the thing that is uh, needed to be considered is how we are, uh, how we are uh, calculate, uh, calculating the loss or how we decrease the probability of the actions that leads us to the low reward or increase the probability of actions that leads us to the high reward. So for, um, uh, for that, let's uh, see the big challenge that we are dealing that is defining the loss in this type of algorithm. So uh, uh, the last function that usually is uh, used in this policy gradient algorithm is uh, a log -like, uh, likelihood that has two parts. The first part is like like uh, likelihood of actions, and the second part is the reward action. So um, the the, uh, likely, uh, the likelihood uh, that our, uh, that our agent thinks uh, it should execute action A, uh, given that uh, it's uh, in a state a, a, S, we put that inside a log, so it's a log probability for us. And after that, we multiply it with a reward, uh, with a total uh, discounted reward or return uh, that uh, we had. And based on that, we calculate the thing that we are calling loss. So, uh, and based on, uh, uh, for, uh, it's a neural network problem, so we need to calculate the gradient uh, gradient descent, so we need to calculate the policy gradient of this part of the formula. And uh, it has a, um, a, a W or theta value that each time should be, uh, uh, in each uh, iteration should be uh, added to the policy gradient. So uh, by defining the last function in the uh, in the in this uh, policy gradient uh, algorithm, we can uh, we can uh, uh, simulate uh, the algorithm, but there is a still one deal, uh, one big challenge that we are dealing with, and it is um, this step in a, uh, in an algorithm. How we can uh, run the policy until termination? Uh, obviously, it could uh, not be happen uh, based on the scenarios. It um, uh, it could not may happen in the real case scenario for this uh, um, uh, autonomous uh, car uh, um, uh, problems, for example. And because of that, uh, most of the questions of reinforcement learning are uh, are uh, simulated in simulation uh, environment or in a laboratory. But uh, there are uh, some kind of really close to realistic type of uh, um, uh, environment uh, scenarios that we can do some kind of training inside and do uh, domain adaptation or transfer learning to uh, use the simulated uh, training uh, for real case scenario. It is uh, opening another uh, uh, another uh, scientific uh, maybe research for us 
to uh, focus on how we can uh, we can uh, transfer the knowledge that we may be obtained in the simulation uh, of reinforcement learning to use in real case scenario. So it is almost uh, the end of the uh, presentation that I had for deep reinforcement learning. If I want to just recap very uh, shortly, at the beginning of the uh, first session, we discussed about the um, foundation of re uh, deep reinforcement learning. Uh, we categorized that, that in uh, uh, value learning or policy learning, but in literature there are different type of uh, categorization like uh, model-based, model-free learning. There are a lot of uh, type of algorithms that I just mentioned briefly in uh, two algorithms, uh, Q-learning and policy, policy gradient. In Q-learning, we saw that we need to maximize something that we called it a Q function. And based on the uh, value of this Q function, we choose the action that leads us to accumulate the reward. But in po policy gradient, uh, the story is different because we don't need to maximize uh, the reward function. We just uh, directly choose the policy that uh, that is a, a probability that uh, gives us the highest uh, probability if we choose the action. So it works perfectly for continuous action space and uh, uh, it can just give us not uh, the uh, direction, for example, in the scenario that we saw, it just uh, uh, give us the, uh, act, uh, the direction plus the speed that we can choose. But uh, based on the question that uh, we have in our mind, maybe uh, the implementation of the scenario and the action space and uh, uh, the state could be completely different. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to this part of the presentation. Uh, if you have any question or if you have any points about uh, the algorithm, I will be happy to uh, hear. Merci. Merci. Merci.